Doug, yeah. you, you talk about in in learning to use conflict in in the proper way. You talked about staying with the objective and staying in the here and now. It's it's so easy for people to start letting emotions get involved and taking the eye off the objective and not moving forward. Talk about that a little bit, because I want I want Jason to hear, because he's got nowhere to start here. Yeah. You know, Jason, obviously your objective is to get your family back together again, to get your wife back together again. So that should be an underlying objective in any conflict that you enter. To enter into a conflict that's going to make her leave you is completely contrary to your purpose in life, right? Yeah. So you have to understand that, that conflict with purpose has to have a singular purpose. So if you want cornflakes for breakfast and Sarah is making you something else for breakfast, that's not a point of contention. That's not an issue worthy of conflict. But if it is to you, because cornflakes are so important to you, then you stay on cornflakes. The kind of milk doesn't matter. The bulb that it's in doesn't matter. You stay focused on the singular objective that you have. The other interesting thing for you that I've picked up on is the rules of engagement. And when you get into a violent altercation or interaction with someone, it's because you don't listen to what they say. You get right into the action, correct? Correct. That's a lack of respect to hear what the person around you has to say. In the rules of engagement of conflict, the opinion of the other party is critical to engage in anything meaningful. If you don't listen and you just react, what you're doing is giving yourself a huge injustice engaging in a conflict that many times isn't even necessary. So how do you stop from doing that? How do you stop for that moment? Say, I'm going to listen before I react. I'm going to give myself 30 seconds to ask one or two questions before I react in the way that I normally do. That 30 seconds could change everything for you. Look, if you want to get violent, you can get violent a minute from now. Right? If there's a reason to. My point is, and there's never a reason to. My point is, if you just wait and listen, you'll be a happier person in the end for it. How did you feel when you threw her on the ground that day? Uh, I was like, oh, I don't, can't, even, can't even describe it. So you lost your purpose, didn't you? Your purpose is to make your marriage better, make a better life for your family. At that moment, your purpose was gone, and your passion became anger. If you took those few seconds and asked an additional question or two, you might be able to regulate that anger a little better. Yeah, and, and it's about boundaries. I mean, you, you live in an apartment now. If, if you're going to interact with Jason in any way, you, you want to know it ahead of time. She, you, you don't want him just barging in. There have to be boundaries. Right. And that's what we're talking about. If the objective is to restore this family in any way, then you know you go barging in that is contrary to the objective because you don't feel safe when he does that you don't feel in control of your life when he does that you don't know that you want him there you don't know that you want this relationship you know that you don't want it the way it is and he's violating that boundary and bullying you and you don't want that correct correct so if you're going to talk to him, then, and I don't know that you want to, but if you do, you may choose to do that in a, in a public place with a, a chaperone or some set of conditions that you're in control of. And if that's the case, and as John is saying, uh, you listen, then you say, that may not be what I want to do, but it's what she wants to do, and I'm going to learn to subordinate my interest to someone else here and, and show that I have some control. Do you have a story or a question for me? Click the link in the description and tell me what in the world is going on.